very much to be here. Thank you very much for, so, for inviting me to come here. And uh, I am happy to share with you this uh, uh, discourse. Uh, so let me uh, just introduce this course first by saying that uh, my name is Ali Mamachatari. I am working in a laboratory which is called uh, Signal and System Laboratory. This is a unity which is a mixed unity between three organisms. One is uh, CNRS, which is the main scientific the main scientific research center in France, C on uh, NRS. Uh, the other one is this is the other one is this engineering school, which is called Superec. This is the abbreviation of Ecole Supérieure d'Electricité for some of you, some of you that you may know some of the words in French. Uh, and this is an engineering school which is probably like your university in U in UDT and the University of Paris, which is one of the main faculty of science in, 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 in France. And uh, so I am working in a group, uh, a group which is called Inverse Problem Group. Here I have written it in, in French. And uh, so the content of this, of this uh, course is Inverse Problems in Signal Processing, Imaging Systems, and Computer Vision. And uh, my main uh, specialty is uh, going from deterministic methods to probabilistic Bayesian approach. We, each of these boards we will see during the, the course how uh, we are going to interpret them. Let me uh, today just introduce the, the main topics of the course that you are going to follow. First, today, maybe I'm going to give you a few examples of inverse problems, what are inverse problems. Uh, next time uh, we will talk about uh, inversion methods. I have uh, uh, separated them in analytical, parametric, and non-parametric. And then we talk about deterministic methods, where our no nowadays uh, classical data matching, distance squares, and representation. And uh, my main specialty is the probabilistic method, and we are going mainly talk about Bayesian inference and Bayesian estimation approach. And we are going to go more in details of this Bayesian approach, how to use prior models, how to do Bayesian computation. And uh, at the end, we are going to apply them in a few uh, applications. One of the applications will be computer tomography. Another one will be microwave imaging, optical differential tomography, synthetic aperture radar imaging, super resolution, and some others depending on the advancement of the, uh, of the courses. And so let me start by, uh, during the, the whole course, I am going to give, uh, I am going to use three main examples to show all the details. And uh, the first example is how to measure the temperature. Let me, before going farther, let me say, tell you, if I ask you what is the length of this, uh, this uh, object, it is very easy. You take a meter and directly measure it. If I tell you measure the time that I, have talk, uh, I am talking, it is easy to measure the time. But if I tell you measure the temperature, the variation of the temperature in this classroom, then there is no more direct measurement. You cannot directly measure the temperature. You need an instrument. And this instrument is called thermometer. And what does the thermometer? Let me just show you this thermometer. What does the thermometer? What you are really measuring on the thermometer? What really you are measuring is the variation of the length, the length of the liquid here. <coughs> this is the length that you are going to measure. But you have designed 
this instrument in such a way that the variation of the temperature must be proportional to the variation, the, the variation of the length must be proportional to the variation of the temperature. And how did you design this, ter this thermometer? This is from the physics. You know that if the temperature increases, the volume <coughs> of the liquid increases. And if the volume increases, the, 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 uh, the liquid goes up. And so you are transforming the variation of the temperature to the variation of the legs. If the instrument was perfect, means that all the variation of the temperature goes to the variation of the length and you could read exactly the variation of the temperature. But there is not any instrument which can be perfect. The best that an engineer can do is to make an instrument which is linear. If the variation is just linear, we are very happy. And if it is linear, means that this is the variation of the temperature. And this is the variation of the length. So a general mathematical relation between, mathematical linear relation between these two quantity can be written in this form. And I have made another assumption here to write this. I have made assumption that the characteristic of the instrument is not going to change during the time. So this means that this does not depend on the origin of the time and depends on the, on the, on the differences. So in this case, this is the relation that you can have between the variation of the length and the variation of the temperature. And uh, you can see that in this relation, just to introduce the word forward and inverse problem is that if you know the characteristic of the instrument and if you know the variation of the temperature, you have designed the instrument in such a way that you can compute G of T. Can somebody tell me uh, what will be an perfect instrument, in which case we will have G equal to F. What will be the case where G will be equal to F? <coughs> this function, which is called impulse response of the system, if this function is a delta function, then you have G equal to F. But this practically never happens. And very often, this impulse response of the system is not a delta function. And so you have this relation. And this means that the variation of the temperature is translated to the variation of the length, but they are never the same. So if you know the instrument, and if you know the variation of the temperature, you can compute the variation of the length. This is what is called forward problem, forward modeling, how to model the characteristic of this instrument. And what is called inverse problem is that you have measured the variation of the length, and you want to find the variation of temperature. And this is what is called inverse problem. We will see the difficulties a little later. Let me just show you here through this example that uh, sometimes <coughs> you must be very careful. Uh, no. here that is not yeah. 
So here I just simulated this instrument. Simulated means that we will see uh, during the exercises, I am going to, to guide you to do this kind of simulation. Uh, here in red, uh, you may also remark that during the whole course, I am going to use a color code. And I am going to use the color red for what is unknown. And the color blue for what can be measured. The observation. So all the time I am going to use this code of color. So you have measured this variation of the length. Here I simulated just to show you the difficulties of the uh, forward and inverse problems. Uh, here is uh, imagine that the temperature has increased, increased, increased very slowly. And then goes down sharply. Here goes to minus zero and goes back. And this is the variation, the real variation of the temperature. What the instrument has measured is this one. I have put these two, these two curves, these two time series on the same scale. And you can see that what has been measured here, and I have observed, for example, every second, the, 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 the variation of the length. And this is what the thermometer shows. And this is the, uh, original, the, the real variation of the temperature. What is very important here, that was not a normal thermometer for the classroom, uh, but what was here interesting was that uh, the temperature has gone bef below zero here, but the instrument couldn't see that. Why the instrument couldn't see that? Because probably the instrument was not perfect. The instrument has what is called an engineering language a time constant. When you have a change of the temperature, this takes a little time to go to that time. And due to this time constants of the instrument, due to this imperfectness of the instrument, you couldn't see, the instrument couldn't see that the temperature has been changed to below zero. And this is uh, one, of the, one of the main uh, uh, point in, 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 in uh, indirect measurement that here is the indirect measurement of this quantity. And because the thermometer or the instrument was not perfect, couldn't see this change of the temperature. We will come back in detail on this example a little later. Uh, the second example that I am going to use, because this is the example in, uh, as you remember in the, in the title of the talk, in signal processing. I am, because very often we, we use what is called the time series, or we say that a function depends on time. So this is uh, say one dimensional signal processing applications. And the second example is related to image processing. And this happens very often. Nowadays, we make a lot of <coughs> images. And the images, what is an image? An image is just a function which depends on two variables of the space. At each point of the space, you have some quantity of the photons coming out and the intensity of the, 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 the and this is what, what is called an image. So let me uh, image, make an image is seeing the things, looking at the things, okay? So uh, how we make images? Uh, a classical camera. What, what does a classical camera? You have a sen, you have the camera, you make a photo. This photographic that you make is just an image. Is the, the word image is just the 
representation of the 3D sand on a 2D plane. Okay? But here we are assuming that we are assuming that the sand is sufficiently far in such a way that we can assume it is a 2D case and what has measured also is a 2D 2D case. So a normal camera just to seeing the normal objects. Uh, sometimes you want to see also the very small things. Then you use a microscope and sometimes you want to see the object which are very far. You may use a telescope. But all of these instruments, a normal camera, a microscope or a telescope, they are looking at an object and making an image of that object. So that object I am going to, again, which is unknown object that you try to observe. I am trying to observe this sand by taking a picture, okay? So this is the unknown object. Uh, as you, cou you could see, I changed, the, the, uh, not, not changing the notation, but t is no more, the, the function does not depend on time, but on the coordinate of the space. And uh, what the instrument shows you is the observed image. In the language of uh, in image processing, we may say that this is the object and this is the image of the object, okay? So you have an object, you have the image, what is observed, and imagine the case that your camera, if the camera is focused and very well designed, then okay, you can say that practically what is here is proportional, even, even if the scale has been changed, but at least proportional, and you can have a direct relation between two. But if the camera is not focused, what will happen? If the camera is not focused and you take a, a white sheet and put a point on the white sheet and you take a picture, if it is not focused, what you are going to have in place of having just a point, you will have a, a, a say, a, a crude, a small crude. And this image, which is no more a point, is called point spirit function of the instrument. And this is exactly the point spirit function of this instrument. So making a lot of assumptions, uh, we, you have to go through the optics, uh, and all the physics of the optics and making a few assumptions and doing a few assumptions and approximations, you can still uh, write a relation between the observed image and the original sand or object and the point spirit function of the system. And again, as you can see here, this relation is something which you may know uh, is a convolution, two-dimensional convolution. And if you compare it for this one, this was also a convolution and one-dimensional convolution. And here we have a two-dimensional con convolution. And again, if you know the instrument, if you know the sin, computing or predicting the observation is the forward problem. And the inverse problem is when you know the instrument, you have measured the image, the pixels of the image, and then you want to estimate F. Here is a few examples which are very well known in the community of image processing. You wanted to measure this, you wanted to have this image, but your instrument was not focused the light was not enough and the instrument was not focused and you have obtained this. This happens very often and how to go from this to this is the inverse problem which is called image restoration. Here you have two other examples. This is the very small object that you wanted a virus or 
I don't know exactly a protein that you wanted to see. They are very small. You used a microscope. The microscope gave you this, how to go from this to this. And uh, probably you can recognize this, the pyramid in Egypt. And you have observed this area by a satellite. Satellite was very far. And you have this image. And you want to go from this image to this image. This is image restoration. Uh, the third example is when you want to see, but not the outside of a body. You want to see inside. You want to see what happens inside the brain. You want to see what happens inside the, the body. This is medical imaging, for example. Or you want to see what happens inside a block of metal, which is very important, for example, a piece of very important part of an aircraft or very important part of a nuclear power uh, instrument. And this is a block of metal. And you want to test if there is a crack inside or a hole inside. So you want to see inside. One of the ways to see inside is to cut and then to look at it. But this is not permitted always. <laughs> if you want to see inside the brain, it is not allowed to cut it and to look at it. What you can do if you want to see inside uh, there are different possibilities. Soft objects, they emit waves. You know that almost every object emits infrared, depending on temperature. So if the object just emits something by himself, OK, we try to measure the emission outside of the body. And from these measurements, from the physics, we make a model. And then we try from this measurement, relate these measurements to the characteristic of the inside of the object. And try from these measurements, make an artificial image on the screen of the computer, which will represent some properties inside the body. Uh, sometimes uh, this object may not emit something that we can measure. You can inject in uh, uh, positron emission tomography, which is an application of medical imaging. You inject some radioactive product inside the, the blood. Blood goes to the to the brain, and then there will be emissions. And you measure around, again, the quantity of the uh, radioactive emissions who comes out. And again, from this imaging, from these measurements, you try to make an image that, in this case, will represent the variation of the concentration of the radioactive material inside inside the brain. And knowing that the blood has bring this uh, radioactive material, then you have the variation or the distribution of the, uh, uh, of the blood in the, in the brain. And this 